a really sad day tonight in sports as we mourn the death of Kimbo Slice. He was taken to the hospital on Monday night nearby his home in Florida, and later reports did confirm that he died, with one person even saying he was at the hospital with Kimbo and that he died of a heart attack. He could not be revived. And Kimbo just fought in Bellator 149 against Dada 5000 back in February. And there was a lot that came out of it. I mean, there were some severe health issues on both sides. Dada 5000 uh, suffered from exhaustion during the fight. And he was taken to the hospital later and was said to be like dead at like one or two points that his heart stopped. And he was actually revived, but both fighters had trouble. And it's crazy to think that four months later, Kimbo is gone, but I wanted to talk about the legacy of Kimbo Slice and just how much he really relates to and is a product of this era. And that's the big thing I want to get into, how much he is a product of our era and our times, a true champion, uh, a viral star, one of the first ever. Just think about this. How do you even know who Kimbo Slice is? How did he become famous? This is a guy, he played some football during his high school life, uh, even played a little bit at Miami in college. Then he went on to become a bouncer for Reality Kings, which is a porn company in South Florida. So he became famous by filming uh, street fights. He competed in street fights, which then got posted onto YouTube. He started these street fights in the backyards, just brawls, kind of like these no rules uh, things, just a lot like MMA now as we see it. And he just whooped up on some people. Uh, and that's how he developed the nickname Slice in one of his fights. He kind of cut open the eye of one of his opponents, uh, Big D. And that's how he got the name Slice. So he started those fights around 2003, I want to say. And think about this. Just think about this. YouTube was not created until February of 2005. In that time, and Kimbo's first uh, professional MMA fight happened in late 2007 as part of Elite XE when he fought on CBS, uh, part of Showtime and all of that good stuff. So Kimbo went from being a bouncer who fought uh, and bodyguard for a porn company who fought in backyards around 2003 to fighting on networks on TV in 2007, a five-year span, with YouTube only being created February 2005. So these fights that he participated in got uploaded to YouTube. Tons of people started checking them out and watching. He was one of the most popular things on YouTube. And then really what makes him different, what separates him, that marketing push, the great name, Kimbo Slice. I mean, that just instantly grabs you like nothing else. Kimbo Slice. Who isn't going to want to find out more about the person named Kimbo Slice? It's like Darth Vader or Shredder for the Ninja Turtles. It's a perfect name. So he had great marketing with his name, and he's the first product of the viral era of sports. I would say Kimbo Slice, YouTube helped turn him into a star, which allowed him to get on TV. He fought first with Elite XC, and then later on in his career, uh, Kimbo had several fights. He fought in the UFC once, and then he fought in Bellator. Uh, so Kimbo had a great legacy, but really what I wanted to touch on here, not only was he an entertainer and seemingly a really good guy, and obviously this is a tragedy, but just how unique his career was in his path to fame and why we love him so much. It's just a really unique thing and uh, a great legacy he leaves behind. And certainly we feel terribly, along with so many other sports fans, about his loss because he was a fun guy to watch in and out of the octagon, that's for sure.